Hello. Hello and welcome everyone. Good evening. Full moon blessings to all of you. And I hope that wherever you are, the sky is clear and you can experience her radiance tonight. It's just so beautiful when the illumination of the full moon can be really experienced. And it's just, um, it was just beautiful last night, the night before too. So I look forward to my, my evening walk. And isn't this just an amazing tag? I don't know how many of these videos you have seen, um, but I love this tag and it makes me feel happy. <laughs> It makes me feel connected and I'm just, I'm just really excited to do this. Of course, it's not too hard to pull out your most beautiful decks. What's hard to do for me is to slim it down to just a few and I created a few categories and I'll share that with you in a moment. So welcome. Hello to Michelle and Patrice. Kyle Liz, hello. I am... Um, Beauty. I want to talk about beauty just for a few minutes because there's something about that word and I encourage you all to reflect on what that means and the energy of beauty, the frequency of beauty and why we may or may not. Hello, Ange. Mallory, hello. Why we may or may not resonate with that frequency. It's a very high frequency. Um, it's deeply connected to the divine. And there are through several uh, older Eastern traditions, practices that are connected to experiencing one's beauty and to embracing one's beauty. And of course, as you're aware, this has nothing to do with the superficial beauty that is seemingly important in Western culture. Um, but it's it's really something. And, and when I was looking through my collection, both Oracle and Tarot, at beauty and what is beauty and what are beautiful decks, decks that are full of beauty, which ones were which one which which ones which ones were I which ones was I going to choose? And was it about the texture? Was it about the, let's throw the feel of the paper, the way the deck shuffles, the sparkly edges? What, what is it that makes a beautiful deck? And as I watched a few of your videos, which I really enjoyed, and I, and I understand that we connect with different things in different ways and we see beauty in different ways. And, and that's perfect, right? We need to acknowledge that there is no one beauty and we create our own beauty around us. And we can do that also with beautiful decks. And I think to celebrate the tarot and oracle decks as beauty is really, um, it's pretty special right? It's pretty special. So they're not just material objects, pieces of paper, physical stuff that we've collected on Amazon, perhaps on a whim or through different. And hopefully if it's on Etsy or Kickstarter, it's not through a whim. It's been a thoughtful process. So just a few reflections on beauty. And I ask you to share some of, of your thoughts on that as well too. So naturally I um, cut and pasted from my spreadsheet and tried to come up with a few decks. And oddly, there is a deck that I'm expecting very, well, not oddly, it's not here yet, um, soon, which is the Journey of the Sacred Bee, I believe it's called. It's a deck that I, as soon as I saw those first few images, I just knew something special was going to be in that deck. And I have a feeling that that will be in my 2021 version of this deck, 2021 version of this video. Uh, unfortunately, it's not here today. Uh, I also wanted to say that um, I think it's important that we give homage to mass market decks as well as indie decks, because there is a lot of beauty in mass market as well. And to reflect on that. And 
unfortunately, when I was going through some of my decks, uh, they didn't make the top five of their category because of the glossiness or because of something else. And I think that the choice of the deck creator to use a certain card stock or a certain type of paper, really, it really does make a difference. There's something about that, right? The tactile experience, which I've talked about before. So I thought, excuse me, I would start with Oracle decks. And there's one deck here I don't have, but I will mention it as an honorable, honorable mention. And in the thumbnail, well, I'm just going to start with this one here. So in the thumbnail, I did not include this. I included a different one of Rebecca's decks, and I'm not going to include more than one deck from the same creator. So this is the Fantastic Being. And this is one of three Oracle decks by Rebecca La Fabe. And these beautiful decks are printed on a luxurious, uncoated, textured paper. And the feel of these decks and the way they, they are in your hands, the sound that they make is really, truly something. And so I don't know if you can see it on, if you don't have these decks, it's this most gorgeous paper quality. And the colors are subtle and soft. And the beautiful thing about this deck is that we see just a tiny little aspect of here, the green man. And part of the art is left to our imagination. It almost looks like there's a luminescence when I'm looking in my screen. Somebody new here tonight, Makoto Takaki. Oh, thank you so much. Makoto, do you live in Japan or are you in the US or Canada or somewhere else? Maybe you're somewhere else. So there's something really, this is absolutely gorgeous card. So in the thumbnail, if you saw the thumbnail on my video, I put one of the cards from her fauna deck. So there is a flora deck, a fauna deck, and this one, which is called Fantastic Beings. And this is a pretty unique deck in its paper quality. And there's one other deck I have, a tarot deck that I'll, I'll share with you that has that similar, similar paper. So for the full experience of the, uh, the art, the texture of the paper, also within this deck, the beauty of the messages on the back are really powerful. And there's a beauty in those as well too. So I really, think that Rebecca's deck deserve, decks in general, deserve um, a really big thumbs up. Later, I will edit and the decks, I, I didn't know which ones I was gonna show you tonight. This is kind of spontaneous. I have a bunch here and so um, I'm just kind of gonna go with this flow. I wanted to, as I mentioned, both celebrate indie decks as well as mass market. And there's certain artists that I think really need to be mentioned in this video. And one of them is Jenna Della Quitaglia. And my favorite deck of her artwork is The Mystical Shaman. And the her artwork is so full of beautiful layers and when i first saw this deck i was so captivated by the movement by the almost perfect blending of the collage the perfect and i i can't say it's not perfect blending of the collage and deeply, deeply resonated with this deck. 
its teachings, the colors. It also shuffles beautifully. And I'm going to show you this one and then one more card. This, now, this is perhaps not the most beautiful card in the deck, but this deck for me resonates on such a powerful level. I can hear the stampede and the clouds. I can feel it. I can almost smell it. There's just such an extraordinary experience with this deck. And this is one of my favorite Wildcat cards in all the decks that I have. I think Jenna just captured this so beautifully. And um, I don't have this deck out often and I brought it out for fall and I was just reminded how, yeah, she's just a beautiful, beautiful artist. You are in the Philippines. Ah, oh, okay. But you have a Japanese name. So is there a Japanese community where you are in the Philippines? Or has your family been there for a while? It's really interesting. I love to know this kind of stuff. How different different groups of people have um, created communities, communities in different, different countries. Patrice bought the Fantastic Being. Let's have a look at what Kyle says here. Beauty encompasses all of our senses, don't you think? We hear its voice, enjoy the feel of different card stocks. Yes, and people love the smell of their decks. Isn't that true? Hello, Jen. Yes, okay. So that, there's two oracles. And I'm actually going to show you five oracles. And these two are both mass market. And I have trimmed this one and edged this one. Every time I work with the Rumi Oracle, and it doesn't matter which card it is. Okay, where's the best? And then I'll try to get it straight. I am blown away by the connection with this deck. I feel enwrapped with beauty. It's just, it's truly an extraordinary um, deck to work with. And part of the experience of this deck is the guidebook. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, your real name is Madeline. Okay. So, so this is the Rumi Oracle. And one of the, oh, isn't that a gorgeous picture? So isn't this a perfect card for tonight? Look at the experience of the full moon that these two souls are having. The experience of this deck. Here's another one. Oh, look at this. It's extraordinary. The experience of this deck is, so part of the guidebook are translations of Rumi's teachings and part of the guidebook are, part of the guidebook is, I believe, like a debt, like downloaded information that Alana Fairchild has included in the book. It sounds like downloaded information. You know how, do you know how downloaded information sounds different? It's in a different voice than when it's just the author writing. So there's a lot of that. And so this connection to spirit is, for me, is deeply connected to beauty. Oh, I, I didn't, I never finished my Sacred Bees story, that deck. So Ananda Shakti, who I have mentioned before, um, she is the one who does the karmic soul path readings. And the last time I had a reading with her, what kept coming up was were bees. And um, sit, now, how many years ago was this? I'm just trying to think. 
this is quite a few years ago. And since that time, there's been this really interesting connection that I've had with bees. And I've spoken about the bees in my backyard and sitting under the tree and being in the energy of the sound and all of them. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this sacred bee tarot that soon will be here. So yeah. So I, I really do find the beauty in the sacredness and not all artwork. But there's something about the colors of the whispers of Ganesh. The, the, it's all secondary colors, pretty much. And hello, Essence. It's just, I don't know, I feel like because of the, the color palette, it feels like another another uh, kind of dimension, especially these deep, deep colors. And yes, the chakra cards are amazing. And some of the non chakra cards, like one of my favorite cards in this deck is the belly. How many of you have? Oh, how about this one? Look at this one. Sorry about the glare. Yes, it's a blue angel deck. Look at that. So, oh, here's the belly one. It's just, it's extraordinary. And this is the one of the things that, yeah, it's something about that practice of yoga and that whole journey through self-acceptance. And this deck really, really hits those teachings beautifully. So, so yeah. I have, I said, oh, I have one more oracle. So I have five oracles. And the ones I've shown, I'm going to put in a pile. So I remember to list them below later. Three, I think there was another one. I don't know where it's gone. What did I show you? What's the very first deck I showed you? Okay, I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> this is a luscious deck. And I have featured a couple of these cards as background images on my thumbnails. I have used them, credited the artist, of course. So this is Amy T. Wan. And it's called A Dick. Ooh, here's the side, Magic Awaits. And it's called A Dick for a Wonder Walking. And the box is an experience in itself. And on the back of the cards, there is a labyrinth. And most of the cards, if not all of them, are horizontal. And they have a keyword. And it's luxurious card stock. Yeah. It's just, oh, this one I put, I think I put this one, I used this background a few times. I, there's something about this deck that just makes me uh, sigh, <laughs> sigh in contentment. So if there, if there was a, a yogic term for this deck, it would be santosha, santosha which refers to that, that sense of contentment. So yeah, this is, this is an extraordinary deck and just the feel of the paper. And it's not that annoying rose petal finish that sticks together. It, it shuffles beautifully and yeah, it's just a it's really great sensory, sensory experience. I may edge it, I don't know. Okay, so those are the oracles. So how are we doing here? Okay. I don't want to butt in on a, on a chat between two of you because I 
may not have caught the whole story. So I'll do my best. Okay, so the next place I'm gonna go is, I was glancing at my pile of Lenormand decks, which I haven't shared for a while. And I really think that the Orum Lenorum, the Orum Lenormand deserves to be in this video. The Japanese art of repairing plates, repairing, repairing vases with gold, you can actually buy kits on Amazon. Because when I first reviewed this deck, I, um, I was thinking, I have a couple of plates that I could do that with. And again, a beautiful box. And so this art is about taking something broken and making it more beautiful, making it more beautiful um, with the repair. So I'll show you some of my favorite cards. <laughs> of course, there's a dash end for the dog. This is by Melissa Watherspoon. And one of the beautiful things about this deck is that when you lay it out, there is this all, if you do a, a grand tableau, then you have 36 cards on the table and you have this line, these lines of gold running all through the cards. And they almost, they tell a story unto them, the, the lines of gold tell a story unto themselves. They're, they're just, they're magnificent. Right, and I just, I just love it like this, this tree card, I was just staring at it like it, and one glance, it looks like we're looking at a very subtle little tree and the gold almost looks like roots and it looks like lightning. And then we have the bigger blotch in the back and it's just stunning. I wanted to show you this one card I wanna show you. The Lotus, oh, and here's the moon. We'll show you the moon for today. There's the moon. So this is the Aura Lenormand by Melissa Watherspoon. And it looks so stunning on the table. So if you wanna see the whole deck, just um, you can go to my video and I'll link it later for you. Oh, you're welcome, Swan. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. It is my pleasure. It's something I love very much doing. Yeah. Okay, so that I believe is Oracle and one Lenormand. Okay. Are there any other Oracle decks that I really want to mention? There's a couple more, but you know, we can get carried away with this. So if I have time, I will come back and share with you a couple more Oracles that I think deserve a mention. So I want to read what Swan said. Thank you for your live reading. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. <laughs> is dangerous. I know it's dangerous. Um, I don't know what Kyle is talking about, but it sounds very, very interesting. Very interesting. I am going to show you one more because I have, I've never, I can never put this deck away. And there's a few cards in this deck that they just make me cry. Like this one, it reminds me of my mother. So not the mother who recently passed away, the one who passed away. Uh, in 2012, the mother that I grew up with, it reminds me of her. And she would say to me, you know, she was always about sitting down. And I'm, I'm like, I'm so emotional. I'm going to tear up here, sitting down to have a cup of coffee. And she would always remind me to sit down, slow down, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee. And she was always having coffee with people, really something. And look at this it's extraordinary. Isn't this like the best strength card? So good. 
so good. Yeah. Oh, and here's another one. Absolutely beautiful. Soul knowing. I believe this deck is, um, it's not available right now, but it does get reprinted from time to time. Look at this one. Fun. When's the last time you lit a sparkler? Go light a sparkler. Go get some sparklers. Light some sparklers. Yeah. Make yourself feel amazing. You are exactly where you need to be. This is called the Connected and Free Alchemist's Oracle, and it's by uh, Lauren Aletta, and the artist is Tegan Sweeney. Yeah, so I just love this deck. It's a beautiful reader. I use this way more than I use the tarot. Okay, so now I am going to go to tarot. And I have a few here that um, will, will be of no surprise at all. I have the Lily Black here. And the Lily Black by Celia Melsville. I want you to stare at this uh, fool card. The tree hanging out over on the cliff. And in the black deck, there is this 3D effect with the artwork. It's really cool. And you see this texture in the clouds. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really something. Um, I wanna show you the Hanged Man card too. And for sure the, I should have put these on top, I'm sorry. The, um, the transformation card, the 20th card is is really really special as you know i use the lily white a lot and it probably is my favorite deck of all time i'm thinking but there's something really magical about this black version and also you should know if you don't know this the black version is not a, a redesign of the white version it's actually repainted it's completely a different deck. So Celia did, like it's, it's, it's just a different deck. It's exactly the same, um, uh, exactly the same card, but it was drawn at a different time on a different medium. So it looks different. And this one actually shuffles a little better than the white one. It probably has something to do with the black, um, the black core, I think it's called, the black core in the deck. And look at the justice card in this deck. Like, it's really something. And so this deck is one that you could include in your decks of diversity or people of color, because the faces all are people of color when it becomes a black deck. That's something I never thought about when I purchased it. Um, I purchased this deck just because I love her artwork and I was looking for um, kind of a, the opposite energy of the white one. Look at the green door at the back here. And I think I've said this before, but it kind of reminds me of, you know, the portal that Sirius Black fell through when Bellatrix Lestrange did the, the spell. One more, I'm gonna show you one more, last one here. And I could show you all of Lily White, but I'm not going to. Here we go, this is, this is one. It's something about the blue jeans in The Hanged Man. It's really gorgeous. I'm really looking forward to reading these comments back because I can see Makoto, also known as Madeline. Madeline is having an interesting conversation about probably about the question that I asked. So that's really cool. All right. So that is Lily Black. Lily Black. The box I don't have here, but the box looks like this, but it's black. 
And the white version is coming out in a mini this year, apparently. So says the creator. This gorgeous deck is also by Melissa Watherspoon, the Aura Lenormand. And I said I wasn't going to show two by the same creator. This is based on the artwork of um, Redon. And she has, in many of the cards, layered more than one of his art pieces together. And the color is so amazing, the way that she has built these layers together. Um, yeah. I should have taken out my favorite cards and put them on top. Because I don't. Here, look at this. And I have done live readings with this deck, and it, it's really something like the way that it, um, the way that it just picks up on energy. This is one of his black pictures. Here's another one. So the the, the color. The color really picks up on Quirin's emotions or that the emotions pick up on the, I don't know how, I don't know which way to say that, but it's really something. And right now that you can't get this deck unless you get it through somebody selling their deck. And so what I would do if you like this is just to contact Melissa and, you know, the more people that bug her, the greater the odds that she's going to reprint it. So, so yeah, so this is called the, this is one of the extra cards. It's called the uh, Lonely Dreamer Tarot. This is fun, isn't it? All right, let's do a mass market one. Do you know what this one is? I've taken this one out quite a few times. I put this in a bag that I made. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yes. And she also has the new Fox Tarot. Yeah, the Fox Tarot is a little bit cute for me. And I know the intention was also to use that with young young readers but yeah yes so Celia also has a new kickstarter oh michelle that's a beautiful project that you're working on Alrighty. so i wanted to choose a couple of mass market decks and i could not not show this one here let's get rid of the banner let's get rid of the banner and i love the backs of this deck and this is called the oh my goodness enchanted <laughs> sorry is it called the enchanted tarot somebody help me i think it is this is this beautiful deck. And this is one of these decks where I get lost, lost in the story. And so this is not a great deck for me to use on in live readings because I love to go into these pictures. I love going inside and seeing what's in the story. And imagining what's going on in here and there's some oh my some of these cards are just extraordinary the levels so not only do we have the little story on the inside but we have this beautiful fabric art all around the frame and every card is different and every card is just like this hermit look at this really something Oh, okay. I know one. Sorry, I just thought of another 
oracle deck I didn't show you that is pretty darn special, and that is Divine Muses. Divine Muses by Marie Bento. So that's why the title says Some of My Most Beautiful Decks, because that's a pretty special um, oracle deck. Here's another one. You know what I find with this deck? I find that when you're doing a reading, it allows you to say things you might not necessarily say because if you know either the kind of the story or the mythology of the picture or something going on, there's like, I don't know. It's, you know when you create distance. So if you use a deck that is very real and you know exactly what's going on in the picture, it's it can be very um like there's not too many options of which way to go but when you have a deck like this it's so open and i find there's lots of different ways that you can you can go through this um here's the emperor sorry last one from this deck yeah so i love this deck love this deck and is it called the Enchanted Tarot? Somebody can, I'll go back to the comments here. I don't know if any of you, I think it is the Enchanted Tarot. It's an old deck. It's really old. Yeah. And I think Shadowscapes also is a deck that I wanted to pull out and I didn't here tonight. So it's definitely a, mar a mass market deck that deserves to be acknowledged. It's truly beautiful, beautiful artwork. All right, I'm going to go in a bit of a um, um, different say something different here. So this is the Yonasa, yes, which is gonna be available again soon. When I first saw this deck, my jaw kind of dropped. I love long skinny cards. And the reason that I, I, thought I found this deck so extraordinarily beautiful, partially was its limited color palette. And I was kind of mesmerized. And so I sent emails to this poor woman and messaged her on Instagram all the time, regularly, trying to figure out when she was going to do a reprint of this deck and how, how could I get it? Because I know when she does print, her runs are really small. And so you really need to be on top of it. Like the, her butterfly cards are just amazing. The language on the bottom is Galatian. Wow, look at that. See, I can just get lost in the artwork. Yeah, it's it's really quite something. Some of the the women in this like I like I like the cards that aren't um, too literal. I like the ones that are more more artsy. But I just I had to share it with you tonight. That's the double card. And the tower is this really cool phallus, um, flora phallus. Yeah, that's fine. I'll find you a couple more. I just, I really like, and oh, this whole suit of wands, you get these, these irises and they're, they're really something like here, like this is the three. 
It's really, really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Same suit. So there's a lot of emotion. Like in the in the people in the deck, there's a lot of emotion. So yeah. And then, then there's the eight of wands there. I haven't shown this deck much on my channel. Anyway, yeah. So that's the Yonasa, yes. And I don't know if that's her real name or not, or if that's her, her artsy name. Um, yeah. So there's that one. I've shown you this one. Shuffle things around here. Okay. So Rosetta. This is quite an extraordinary deck. Rosetta. So the Rosetta Tarot is a thought-based deck by M.M. Maline. Tabula Mundi, same creator. And I, this is another deck where, well, I just could really show you any card. This, these are the backs of the cards. And this is a deck that I want to um, spend six months with, a year with. And once, so I told you I have a whole bunch of decks that are in my post office box in Blaine, Washington that are just sitting there because I can't get across the US border. So once all of those decks, well, maybe they'll be there for years, I have no idea. but. Um, I'm not going to order any more decks unless it's a deck that is really, really screaming to buy, 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 because there are so many decks in my collection like this one that I truly, truly want to spend some significant time with. And this one has hieroglyphics on it too. So it's just, so up my alley and I wanted to look at those and I have a want to start working with ruins and different things yeah so this Rosetta is oh here's the ace of fire look at that it's really gorgeous yeah I'm Really, really excited to the Tabula Mundi. I was able to acquire um, secondhand through a Facebook group, and so it's one of the decks that are sitting in my box at in Blaine. So the reason, so I'm in Canada, and Blaine, Washington, is just across the border, and I have um, the reason. Oh, you have to see this one too. Look at this. Look at that. so beautiful um is i probably shouldn't even say this on youtube well the postage is cheaper if the decks come from the us the postage is cheaper and i have to pay a pickup for every every deck but it's still it's still a lot cheaper so i go down and usually pick up a few at the same time so that's the rosetta terra by m m maline the next two decks I'm going to show you, I think almost everybody has shown you, but they have to be shown because they are extraordinary, extraordinary decks. And this one, I recently, this is the Pig in Other Worlds, I recently received as a gift from a yoga student who's also watches me on Tarot Tube. And I, ha I had no idea until I had this deck in hand, how extraordinary this deck was. I had no idea. And isn't that just the way you can, until you feel a deck, until you actually see the artwork and the subtleties of the artwork up close, it's it's near impossible to, to understand the, the beauty and the dimensions 
of the art. And of course, it has gorgeous cardstock. It shuffles beautifully and all of that as well, too. So that is all part of the, um, the experience of Pagan Other Worlds. Yeah. The moons and, of course, the extra cards, which I don't have here, um, are really something. Here's another amazing strength card. So yeah, I'm like even this, this 10 of swords, like you've got the skull at the bottom and your 10 swords and the growth coming up. And I don't know, it's, it's really something. So I am, I am so grateful <laughs> to have received this as a gift. And she also knit a beautiful tarot bag for this deck, which is which is really, really special. I see Tamsin has arrived and your long shadows poets tarot corner. Hello. Yes, um, customs fees are terrible and I've paid um, a lot of money. I paid a lot of money. I know um, Simon talks about it on his channel now and then about getting dinged for the customs fees. And that does happen here quite a bit. So it is. So yeah, so if I can make a, a little trip and pick up a few decks and books and other things, it's, it's like a, it's like a little adventure, right? It's a day trip for me. This is another one that I couldn't bring out because this is such a luxurious deck. This is the publisher's Il Manangello. And, you know, nobody ever mentions the artist of this deck. And I actually looked her up uh, to see if she had done any other decks. Her name is Anna Maria Dono Frio, I believe. Anna Maria Dono Frio. And as, as far as I could determine, she hasn't done any other decks. And uh, yeah, I was talking about the texture of the paper in Rebecca Lafave's decks. So I wanna tell you what the difference is because these decks have kind of a similar, so this one is significantly thicker. This one is like, I would say almost double. This one is almost double the thickness of this one. And, um, but it's that same luxurious textured, uncoated paper, which suits both of these decks for completely different reasons. So these decks, it really suits the decks because of the connection with nature and the naturalness of the decks. This one, it feels like a connection to the past. And the pip cards are, I think the pip cards are my favorite in this deck. I really do. I, besides the shape and the, the, Luna, the Luna card is pretty, pretty good too. It's, it, for me, this deck is all about the pip cards. I really, really like the pip cards. I like the borders on them. I like the details on them. They feel, um, I did a video a while back on the reason I like to read with Tarot de Marseille. And while this is not a straight up Tarot de Marseille, um, it has to do with that connection to the past and to, you know, almost like getting transported back to earlier experiences of Tarot. And I have, I have two Il Menangelo decks, the Soprafino and this one. And they both kind of do that for me. They, they feel like, 
I don't know, it's just a, another time, another era. And there's this, I don't know if you can see it, the gold around the edge of the pentacles, it's like hand painted on. At least that's what it looks like when you're holding the card. So, yeah. <laughs> so good. And this deck is called La Corta de Terrochi, not La, La Corta. Oh, my God. One more. Last one. Two of Pentacles. Yeah. Just, I just love the pips in this deck. Now, the other the thing about this deck, and this deck goes in and out of print. Um, I believe the artist has actually passed away. So for me, if I just rest it in my left hand, I can overhand shuffle it. It's fine. Um, it's, a, it's, it's quite a mid full, but because they are um, not full size, it's totally doable. And they just feel so good. So, so good. The backs are nothing to write home about, right? They're just like um, a non-saturated version of the cover of the box. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you watched Kelly Bear's video or Tom's video or Masha's video. Um, what was your biggest surprise of beautiful decks? Was there a deck that you, you forgot about or, I don't know, something that was something that came to mind or, this, and besides Pagan Otherworlds and this one, um, is there another deck that got repeated a lot in other people's videos? Because um, I've only watched, I've watched three, four? I think I've watched four. I watched The Artistry of Arrow and she had some beautiful decks. Yeah, she really did. So that was that was something. Okay, so that's all I'm going to show you. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I have one more. Last one. <laughs> of course, there's one more. And the one I want to talk about is Sorry, I'm just reading your comments. Um, yes, yes, and I'm doing that. So I'm selling a lot of, I'm selling 27 of my tarot decks and I've been doing that as I ship them out, marking it as a gift. So hopefully people don't have to pay for customs. Um, so I, and I said, there's another Oracle I might show you as well too. So I, I do want to talk about Bone the Fire and I, I have uh, several decks that are illustrated by Anna Christina Torian. And I just love her artwork. I have multiple copies of Oracle of Echoes and I have the Hidden Waters Tarot and one deck I will purchase or two decks I will purchase when they come out are both the Abyss Tarot and the Tarot of Echoes for sure. I just, her artwork is just really, really special. This deck, the Bone, Stone, and Earth Flesh, is an amazing compilation of two very special people in our community. And the years, and I'm not talking about necessarily years in this lifetime, but the layers and generations of witches and magic and potions and um, connection with the earth and the ways of the pagan um, pagan traditions, wherever they are, be they in Brazil or Australia or anywhere in the world, is is felt in the energy of this deck. And so. Um, I think there's there's a lot to there's a lot that's going to come out of this deck when I'm working with it. I have been really enjoying connecting with it. I did do uh, initial impressions of it, and there's a couple of cards that I have some questions about, and I will 
um, continue to explore them. But this artwork is beautiful. And it's not just the artwork, the work that Avalon put into the guidebook. So the guidebook is the earth flesh and the earth flesh is the, right, the, the, the inspiration for the artwork. And I think sometimes I forget that, you know, because if the artist did not create the deck, the inspiration for the painting came from the deck creator. Yes, it was um, painted and created by the artist. But I just wanted to say that because I think sometimes I forget. Oh, I love this card. This is the two of uh, swords. And look at her with her pendulum. This nomadic woman here. Um, yeah, this death card is absolutely stunning. So this is a shout out to both Anna and Avalon because the union of those two is a, probably a once in a lifetime blessing to this community. This is a most extraordinary three of swords. The burnt heart and the oak rising out of the, out of the, um, out of the burnt heart is truly something. Yeah, so I'm I'm really um, pleased with this deck. It's very, very dynamic. There's lots of flow, lots of energy. And you know me, I like color. I really do. And I am keeping the Brugia card in the deck. This is the Brugia card that was inspired by Avalon herself. Yeah, and here's your moon card for tonight. Mm. I do have one um, one thing I want to put out there. And so when you see a card in a deck, and there's a few in this deck that remind me of other decks that are very similar to other decks. And I know if we look at any Rider Waite Smith deck, and we look at the various different variations, we see that all the time. And we don't question it because it's based on the Rider Waite Smith. But in this case, there's a couple of cards that remind me loud and clearly of other decks. And I'm just not sure how to digest that. One of them is the Five of Wands. So. If any of you have noticed that, I would love to have a little conversation because I want to get past that. I really do. I really do. So, I mean, of course, they're not exactly the same, but they're very similar. So let me know if you have noticed that. I'm going to pull a card for you. And then I'll put my glasses on and read the last few comments. Okay, so on this night of full moon, October 1st, October 2nd, wherever you are, in the illumination of her energy, in deep reverence and respect for the waters on this planet, the waters within our physical bodies. And all the teachings and the experiences we have shared through divine feminine energy, especially on in connection with the full moon. Is there anything in particular that we would all benefit from hearing tonight. Being reminded of. Is there a common shadow? Is there a common issue that we tend to um, 
keep just, you know, out of the way so we don't really have to look at. Mm. So there's your three of swords. So it's three of wands, three of swords, and queen of pentacles. And I'll show you this three of three of wands. And I haven't read the um, the guidebook, and I don't know whether this is tattooing or this is some kind of traditional cutting in the back. But there's definitely a medicine man here. There's community. There's a group of people. And ultimately, there's definitely a deep sense of healing in this card and healing through community and healing through sound and healing through tradition and healing through ritual. And that ultimately, we cannot move forward until we heal. And uh, if we trust and we work together and we protect and we we reach out and I think part of the this three of wands, part of this three of wands is just that. And that is, it's really important that we reach out and ask for help and that we have the courage to go out and join the ceremonies, be they virtual or real. Um, because if we don't feel that, deep level of connection and I was talking about at the very beginning tonight right this this feeling of beauty for me is this connection to the divine and this particular three of wands is that it's a it's a tangible connection to the to ritual which connects us to the divine and helps us with our healing which is what this three of swords is about it's about understanding that unless we be unless we be with the pain, unless we be in the pain and we experience the pain and we, we feel it with our whole being, we, we won't process it. And the beauty of processing it is something magical like the oak and hugely strong like the oak. And if we can bear the pain and trust and trust immensely that on the other side of this horrific experience is something of so much beauty and so much strength, maybe that will help us get through. And who better to guide us through all of that than the, than the queen of pentacles? Because she knows she knows. And of all of the queens and all of the kings, I've, I've always felt that, you know, the, the queen of pentacles and the king of pentacles are the most embodied. They are most connected to all of the elements. And so here we have this three card reading, which is encouraging connection. We have two threes, right, as well, too. So very, very um, kind of magical uh, three cards here. So take from that whatever you will. And I will bid you good night. And if there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer. I wonder what guidebook you are talking about. Yeah, you're talking a little bit about Anna. Oh, you're so welcome, your long shadows. I have found um, a lot of resources on Instagram. So that's where I connected with Yonasias um, on her Instagram. And that's the best place to follow her because her website goes up and down and up and down. And a lot of these creators have amazing, amazing Instagram accounts.
So yeah, so the last thing I just wanted to say before I go is that if you haven't checked out my shop, I have added a shop on my website and my tarot classes are there and my readings are there now and um, yoga classes. The only thing that is not there and I will be teaching online. I'll be doing level one Reiki training. Uh, it'll be a two day class. And so you need to go not to the shop, but to the Reiki training page. And this will be in October. And I have done one session online before with a group of people on Zoom and it actually surprisingly worked out really well. And um, if you're a little um, reticent to think about Reiki and Reiki online. <laughs> it's totally understandable. And um, we can have a chat about that if anybody's interested. So stay well, enjoy the full moon. And I can't wait to see your beautiful decks. Namaste.